These are the serial numbers for each of the astronauts' suits from Apollo 11 through to actually Apollo 18. And the suit numbers are there, the flight suit and the serial numbers of the flight suits are there. And then when you start looking closely at Armstrong's suit, what you have there, you have the part number, which shows it's a A7L number. You have the size and you have the serial number. And the serial numbers for each individual part, the boots, the gloves, the helmet, and the main suit itself should all be matching numbers for the serial number. And as you see here, in that particular one, you see serial number 73, and that's a glove. It says it's a glove assembly, but the chart shows that Armstrong's primary suit, which was the EVA suit, is 035. And that shows for all of the serial numbers for each of the astronauts are listed there, and none of them match. And you can see here, serial number is 028 for the helmet. And you look again at the boots, and it has a 547 serial number, which is completely different than anything else you'll see because it's in the 500 numbers. But you can see it's an A7L. It's funny, it doesn't say it's a right glove. And here again, you have a serial number of 005. Okay, and that's part of the helmet. Here's a uh, particular photograph that has been deleted from the journal site. Fortunately, I had pulled down a copy of this before. And there is the serial number for the main suit, which is 071. But this particular photograph has been pulled by NASA because, as you can see, the zipper is about an inch short of sealing up. It doesn't even go any farther. The teeth don't go far enough up to even close the suit off tight, so it would never, ever seal. And that one, whether they claim it's restored or not, they put a new label on the inside of it, which, as you can see, it doesn't match the suit or any other. And you can see that's a new label stitched in again. But you don't see the numbers on that one in particular, but you can see this. So if this was done after they restored it, that's fine. I mean, it's fine for them to modify the suit. Armstrong only had one suit. They had no contingency or backup to carry the suits. And I do believe you have a chart on there. It shows the weight of the suit. The number of suits total they made the A7L suits. None of these numbers are making sense because we haven't seen one of these numbers show up yet on any of this gear. Well, you see here, the training suit is 071 for Cooper, except it says Armstrong right on the label. So if Aldrin's is 071. But Aldrin's suit is 036. These numbers, I think they just made them up. I don't know what date they added this in. It's definitely an update. But these numbers don't make any sense. They just make them up. They're just creating massive amounts of data that don't mean anything. And that is an updated PDF file. It's not the original. It shows you the nominal pressure, 3.7 PSI for the suit. The IVA PSA weight, 53 pounds. The EVA PSA weight is 64 pounds. The LSS weight is 125 pounds. And the EVA system weight complete is 189 pounds. Now, if they were using that equipment for practice simulation, they're going to have to have a different suit. They're not running around with 189 pounds on their packs. It's either that or they're going to have to put them on wires to take the weight off of them when they're practicing. Then it shows the longest use is 4.8 hours on there, which is quite interesting when they go out for an eight hour tour. That's 11 to 14. And then all they claimed is that they just added more pressure to the oxygen tank so they could go out for a longer, for eight hours for 15, 16, and 17. And of course, once you compress something to a liquid, you're not, you, you can put as much pressure on it as you want. You won't get any more in there. What interests me though is not one of those serial numbers are the same. No, if you're going to build a suit, an environmental suit, it's a spacecraft on its own for an individual. You would want the glove, the boots, and the helmet. Those would be very highly machined, matched fit to make sure that each one of those seals. And that's why the serial numbers are on them, to match them to the main suit. So they should all be the same number. 
and they should all be tested and certified working with those numbers. If you interchange a glove, highly unlikely that it would fit because they're individually made, these suits, right? And that's the same with manufacturing anything that has any kind of precision to it, right? If you build an engine, you match the pistons, rings, connecting rods, wrist pins, everything else, and bearings for each cylinder. And if you take it apart, you put it back exactly the same. You don't want to mix them or change them around because you will blow the engine up when you start it up. This is just as high tech or should be as high tech as that. These serial numbers should match. The helmet needs to match that ring exactly on there. And you just can't take another helmet and put one helmet on the other. And you can't take the gloves and change them up from one suit to the other. And the same with the boots. Of course, the boots don't even have a ring or compression nothing on them. They just zip together very loosely, actually. And these rings appear to be used for simulation purposes, not for an actual spacesuit, because those are just quick release, or you can just compress it and slide them off, and they just work like little key latches. And of course, the rubber seals in there wouldn't work at all because once you get past tor 10 to the minus 6 right you need to have metal one time use only seals when you're repairing something i don't care what it is you have a service manual the service manual will give you the model number and the serial number when you look in the parts list all the parts are different they will have a different number and a different reference number so that you can look up which part you want to replace so that you have an accurate part in place of it but in the suit, you should have the same serial number, and we're not seeing that. We're seeing different serial numbers. None of that chart is right. Not even the main suit is the correct number. Never mind the gloves and the boots and the helmet. Every one is different. Like, they just made 105 suits up, and they're just mixing and matching all over the place. There's no way they're going to seal. And if those zippers were as good as NASA claims they are, and they have to claim they are because they claim people landed on the moon wearing these suits. Why isn't that technology transferred across to anything else? Those zippers at the amount of pressure it is. Can you imagine you could make a car engine and to seal off the intake, you could just zip it on. It'd be so easy to replace, eh? You could zip on your exhaust manifolds, right? You could zip on your head. You wouldn't need to bolt it down. These zippers are that durable to handle that kind of pressure. You could just zip everything together on a car engine, just unzip it, take it off and replace it, put another one on. If Look at the inside of that spacesuit through the neck. Look how far that zipper goes up. It does no, not... It's, a, it's an inch short of everything, right? The only thing they did is they just made a Velcro flap over top of it to cover up all of the other stuff. And you can well imagine that the zipper that runs right around underneath the flap at the crotch is exactly the same way. Now I wonder how that zipper stayed up. For example, if they're moving around in the suit, what's preventing that zipper from coming down? Uh, nothing. There's no lock on it of any kind. And the fact that it's on the back of the suit means that you need to have assistance to put that damn thing on. Even when it's done fully all the way up, you can see right out there's full air on it. Because a zipper still has to have an inside and an outside. Here you can see the zipper on the inside of that neck, which means that if he's moving around inside there, that zipper's coming down. It's gonna move. And you can see where the zipper stops, the space that's there, and the fact that the material is not bonded to the, the metal itself, and it has to be bonded as well to the metal or it's not going to seal either. And that also shows that the exterior white suit is the pressurized unit, that there's no inner bladder there. Because the helmet, the ring seal at the top, is being attached to the white part of the suit, so there is no inner bladder there, and as you can see, they just have a foam comfort suit inside of there. And that's either done to make it look like it was under pressure because they put that thick foam in there, or maybe it was that annoying to wear these suits that they needed to get a little bit of cushioning in there. But uh, they definitely heat up. But you can see very, very clearly in that photograph, 
the zipper does not do all the way up and the, the, the suit is not sealed to the ring either. It would make more sense to put the bubble helmet on the inside and then push it up so that it seals like an aircraft door. That's how it should work. The pressure should be pushing against the seal at all times with all of the configurations. And it's exactly opposite of that. And if you see those little connections, there's no way to compress the helmet against that ring. Those are just like door locks that are on there that just for quick disconnect, you just squeeze the little thing and they drop in and you pull the helmet off and put it back on against the rubber seal. There's no way that that is anything other than for display purposes or for simulation, easy to pull the helmet on and off. It has nothing to do, it would never pass or be certified for any kind of pressure of any kind whatsoever. Especially when all of the parts are mismatched. Even if they were capable of sealing and you mismatch them, you're not going to have a seal. They're individually made. They would have to be handcrafted so that they match each other. The seals for each one would have to be replaceable. Every time they got in and out of the suit, they'd have to put new seals inside that ring so that the helmet would seal down. And then very carefully test it before they fully depressurize the vehicle. Otherwise, if they just pulled the valve and depressurized the craft and their suit wasn't sealed up, they'd be very quickly dead. Or they'd run out of consumables. And that's the biggest thing. Any little leak, they're going to run out of air. They can't put up with it for a very long period of time. You wouldn't manage any amount of time, let alone a three-day journey back if you had a leak anywhere. And then you have all of the dust and dirt and grime, everything else, all over those suits. And they do multiple EVAs wearing those suits. The door seal on the lamp isn't going to seal because you're putting dirt across that seal. The dirt on their gloves, the dirt on everything else, it's going to be everywhere. Those would have to be polished right out again with a new seal in it to work. These suits aren't even close to that. Not even close. 